What up, everybody? This is Big Elbow Chillin'. Um, those of you that have, have watched the last couple videos, you know why the two little vatos locos, Averno and Atlantis, aren't here. I'm filming at a secret remote location, just uh, laying low for a minute, but I'll be heading back to the crib soon. So this is the big one. Um, I went to the Cape and Cow Con at um, in Berkeley, California at the Gilman Brewery. And these are the books that I bought from uh, from the Cape and Cow um, booth themselves. Um, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna start with my indie shit. So I got, these were all dollar books. I got about 35, 36 of them for 25 bucks. I just brought the stack up and uh, that, that's the way to do it a lot of, with these at these things like if you're getting a, getting a big ass stack they don't really even want to sit there and count it so just make I, I, that's what I do I'll just make them off and be like hey will you take 25 on this and they were like yeah fuck it cool they didn't want to sit there counting books so anyways uh, those of you who know me know my I'm on my aerosol shit Warlock 5 um, I love these 80's black and uh, black and white comics especially aerosol unfortunately this isn't uh, Dennis Beauvais or whatever his name is isn't on the art anymore. It's uh, penciled by Patrick M McEw McEwen and inked by Jim Somerville. So it doesn't look as good as the Beauvais stuff. Some of you guys might know um, might know uh, Jim Somerville from like work that he did on Aliens comics. But it's um, I don't know. It doesn't look bad, I guess. It's just not as good as... I don't think it's as good as the other stuff. But anyways, so uh, there's that. Warlock Warlock 5, number 15. Uh, Enchanter, number 2 of 8. But they actually only did three issues. Um, so this is book here is... The... Modesty Blaze, I think it's a, a reprint. Like this is the, this isn't the original format. Um, what I got, how I got turned onto these books. That's number um, three. Here's number nine. I was watching an interview of one of my favorite artists, uh, John Paul Leon, and it was an interview. If I remember right, uh, there he was talking with a guy about another artist named Alex Toth, who was a big influence on him. And he named another guy that... I don't remember if he said it was an influence on him or if it was an influence on Alex Toth, but I think it was just him saying another influence on him is this artist named John Holdaway. And uh, he drew these books right here, so they had been on my radar because of that. Um, apparently she's like a... kind of like a spy. I've heard her described as a, a female 007 or something along those lines. But yeah, I can see the similarity to, to an Alex Toad or John Paul Leon. Like they're able to, in a very like simple, simplified style, I guess. Like you don't see, there's not a whole shitload of lines, but you can still, like the people look very, uh, It looks very realistic with very few fucking lines. And I, I just, I appreciate that shit. Like, I, I'm a fan of Alex Toad also for those reasons. Like, they just do the most with, uh, make it look easy, you know? So yeah, uh, so I got three issues of that. A big gap though, like a nine, 10, at least those two are in a row, but from number three all the way to nine. But yeah, those are just for the art anyways. Um, I found a copy of New York City Outlaws. Just some um, indie shit that I've, al I've always heard was good. Kind of doing that um, black, white, and red style before it was a thing. Well, I guess they have like the skin tone too, but I, I just think that looks cool. 
I have another issue of this book. I don't know what, what issue it is, though, but that's number two. I don't think what I have is a number one. Uh, Roach Mill, that's just run filler. Uh, Blackthorn Publishing. Um, yeah, Blackthorn Publishing. I think that was the last issue that I needed. Again, this is just that 80s black and white shit. That um, means so much to me. I was a, I'm a big fan of that stuff. I was a young, impressionable lad when that, at that time when that stuff was coming out. And, you know, where I lived, we didn't really have access to that stuff. But when we go visit my mom uh, up in Northern California in the summers, you know, that's when we got turned on to that kind of shit. You know, at that time, aside from uh, maybe like the stupid... Um, like Donald Duck and Richie Rich, Archie, that kind of shit. I had never seen any um, non-Marvel or DC superhero comics. So, speaking of which, uh, Grips, that's the Greater Mercury, though, not the Silver Wolf, but I'm, I'm still putting that shit together. Um, it's not Tim Vigil art, but it's still pretty good, man. Like, it still looks pretty cool to me. I'm not sure who the artist is, but it's not bad. You're not gonna, you're not gonna top Tim Vigil, but E for effort, right? It looks pretty cool. So that's number eight. So I got these a little bit out of order from Volume Two of Grips, and number six with the female Grips. I don't know what the fuck is up with that. Anyway, um, oh, this is cool. Um, the Demon Blade by Alex Nino. If you're not familiar with Alex Nino, look him up. A badass Filipino artist. I think he did some Conan. Um, I found another issue of this Demon Blade uh, while just in a random dollar bin. I had never heard of Alex Nino before, but I just, I looked inside the comic and I was like, oh shit, like, like there's some, just some badass art in here. I mean, this shit is just fucking dope, man. I don't think he does, um, he doesn't really work in comics anymore. There was a lot of really talented Filipino artists that I don't think really got their due. But yeah, so that, that, I was happy to find that. Uh, another um, one I was happy to find was uh, Silverback. Number three. This is a mini series about uh, the same Arden or Argent, the wolf that's always fighting with Grendel. John Peck on the art. Shout out to my man Warlock who put me onto this series. I didn't even know it was a thing. So again, these are all less than a dollar, man. I, I was really happy. Uh, Six Gun Heroes. You know, this is one of those things where if it was bagged, I wouldn't have bought it. But since it wasn't bagged and I got to look inside of it, I just thought the art looked cool. And... Um, I, it's like an anthology. I don't know who the artists are. I thought maybe there might... Some of it looked like some Alex Toth shit, but I don't think it is. Um, I haven't looked into it to see who, who drew what. But all the art looks good to me. So fuck it for less than a dollar, right? Um, Blazing Combat. Uh, speaking of my man Alex Toth right there, Wally Wood, John Severin, Gene Cologne. Um, 
I heard about this story that Toth did in here called uh, Lone Hawk, where it's like a, it's like a, basically a dogfight, which I don't think, you know, a dogfight is in like airplanes. And I don't think that's an easy thing to pull off in comics. It's kind of like, like trying to do a chase scene, you know, like it's a lot easier to pull off in film than in a fucking comic book. So yeah, I grabbed that for sure. Um, again, uh, if you watch the other video, I found the other part of this uh, Dark Horse Presents, and I got this for the um, the Blackheart story by. Um, by Frank Quitely. It is pretty cool to see Frank Quitely stuff in um, in black and white. I don't really know what the story is about, but it looks cool. It's decent action in here. So yeah, I'm looking forward to checking that out. And then, uh, I don't know who else does shit in here. Um, Too Much Coffee Man, Winter Circle, and Night Drive. I don't know any of that shit. Maybe it'll be cool, who knows. This one I got just because I love that fucking cover. It's like, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a Kirby um, homage cover of some sort. Uh, I don't know what book, but I know I've seen it. Uh, and then that guy looks fucking crazy <laughs> and the long ass head and I don't know how many faces but um, also in this is uh, this is that that cover is for a story called Hermes versus the Eyeball Kid by Eddie Campbell and there's another story in here by uh, Mor- uh, Mobius story so I mean, for a dollar, why not, right? Get some Mobius, and I'm interested in what's that whole eyeball kid thing about. Yeah, there's a little Mobius page. The Mobius story actually doesn't look all that interesting. It's just like, looks like guys driving around in a car. Um, hold on one second. I gotta grab a beer. Sorry about that. So, uh, shout out to, oh, wait, hold on. This is a Marvel Tales reprint. Um, I don't know what issue that's a reprint of, but, uh, I have, like, I, I've, if you guys have been watching my videos lately, I, I, I've been trying to get more into the Steve Ditko stuff, and, um, it's growing on me, and this seems to be a Doc Ock issue. It looked like it would. Yeah, there's some Doc Ock in here. So, yeah, um, again, for less than a dollar, I'll grab those. Marvel Tales are good reprints, man. They're, they're fuck a facsimile, like, with that bullshit paper and three ninety nine dollars price. So you get that for less than a dollar, and it's on. it looks more accurate to what the original comic looked like any damn ways. Um... That's how I feel about those facsimiles anyways, but... I mean, if you just want the issue, you know what I mean? Then, you know, get it however you can. I, I say instead of... You don't want to pay that fucking price for the key, which I, ne- I never do. I don't want to ever pay that. So, uh, anyway. Uh, shout out to my man, Warlock. Uh, link in the description. Uh, he put me onto these Spider-Man classics. Which, if you if you if you want to read those Spider-Man Ditko's, uh, um, Ditko's, those Ditko Spider-Man issues, and you don't want to pay up for the those fucking keys, this is another alternative. I prefer the Marvel Tales because they have better covers. I think I don't I don't really like the covers on these, but it's all about what's in between the, the what's what's behind the cover, man. Like. What's inside the book is that good Ditko Spider-Man art. So there's number three. Here's number four, which is a Doc Ock issue. I hope it's not the same fucking... No, it's not. 
the strangest foe of all time, Dr. Octopus. So anyways, uh, here's number four. These are probably, I wonder if these are, it might be first appearances of those characters. There's number four. There's number five. And I think this is a reprint of the first appearance of the lizard. There's number seven. Here's number eight. The truth is, you're not the same person that you were back then. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, number 11 with the Enforcers. I have never read any issues with those guys, but they always seem cool to me. Uh, number 13. For me, being born without legs, technology is pretty huge. Number 14. And then this one, have you ever, uh, have you ever found a fucking dollar book and been angry about it? <laughs> like, this is a new, a new emotion for me. Like, I, so fucking, like, the shit hasn't even came in the mail, but I paid like, and this is a lot for me. I know I'm a cheapskate, but whatever. I paid like almost four, I paid about four bucks for the Marvel Tales reprint of Craven's first appearance. And then I find that. And it, uh, the reason I ordered it was because I had it on my want list for so long and it was never available. Then it came available one time and I was going to buy it. I had it in my cart, but I was looking at other shit and somebody fucking bought it out from under me. So I was like, fuck it. I'm, uh, it came up. I bought it. I was feeling good about it, and then I found this in the fucking, for less than a dollar, before the shit even came in the mail, so, yeah, like, that's, that's what I'm going through, um, yeah, actually feeling angry about finding a fucking sweet-ass book in the dollar bin, I mean, I know a lot of people don't think that ain't shit, right, because it's, uh, Spider-Man classics or whatever, but, like I said, what's inside is, uh, I don't like that cover that much either, but what's inside is that first appearance of Craven, Steve Dicko art. It's still on that, it's still on that same paper, that, that newsprint paper. So I'm going to do some comparisons on these Marvel Tales and, uh, Spider-Man classics. Uh, shout out to my man, uh, PGH Zombie, what's up, PZ? putting me onto this Black Dragon book. That's number two. I think that is the last issue I need. And again, same fucking thing. Feeling angry about finding a good ass book in the dollar for less than a dollar. So that's Talent Showcase. The cover, pay no, pay no mind to it. The, the talent that's showcased in here is a guy that I'm a big fan of. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, Darwin Cook. And, um, it's only a few pages, but it's cool to have, right? And fucking, I, I felt good about it. It was on my, my want list forever. It was never available. It popped up. I bought it. I jumped on it for like fucking, uh, almost four bucks, like three with the 25 cents for shipping. It was like a little bit under four bucks. But and fucking before it could even come in the mail, I find it in for less than a dollar. Mm. Anyway, so uh, on to some uh, DC, more DC stuff. Um, Sandman Mystery Theater. Um, what up to a new subscriber and a. Uh, someone I have recently re subscribed to in the last couple weeks, um, uh, Pope Grimey. Um, he had hit me in the comments about uh, something I said about, uh, I was telling the story about how I always thought that this Sandman looked cool, the, the gas mask guy. And then when that other, like the emo Sandman or, or goth Sandman shit, I was like, hey, where the fuck is the guy with the, ski with the uh, gas mask? Did I say ski mask for Anyways, sorry, I had a couple beers. Um, where's the guy with the gas mask? Like, that's the guy that I thought looked cool. But anyways, so uh, this is number six. This is the beginning of a... 
no, no, number five, which I already have, is the beginning of a new story. And um, I very into this uh, John Watkiss art. If you guys don't know John Watkins, check him out. He, he does some good stuff. Like, I really like his... Uh, he's, again, like one of these... like Kind of like a John Paul Leon... Um, you know, he like he spots the blacks. For, I like the way he spots the blacks and uses use of shadows and shit. I'm giving this series a second chance because I had some, some issues of it the uh, guy davis who i'm a fan of his art and honestly the fucking the art was cool and everything but the the, fuck, the book was kind of boring um so i'm giving this a second chance it's a new story a different story arc so maybe this one will get me uh there's number seven and there's number eight and then uh so i already have number one of this and i got out of a dollar bin as well but um world's finest i think these have back covers too oh yeah okay and i got these because i'm a big uh, fan of steve rude's art steve rude is a a bad dude number two and number three there's a back cover for you so yeah, like like I said, like about 36 books for uh, 25 bucks. A little bit of Steve Root goodness for you. And then for those Superman fans out there, which I am not a fan of, but uh, hey, Steve Root drawing Batman, I'm in, even if Superman's in the book too. So that was it, yeah. Fucking like 36 bucks, 25 bucks, cape and cowl. I want to visit the actual shop, the brick and mortar, one day. Um, just got to get out to Oakland, I guess, one of these days. If they do this again, I'll fucking be there. Um, this time, I'll, 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 I think I'll be even more prepared. It was, uh, man, to be honest, like the temperature wasn't high. But the Cape and Cow booth was like one that did not have, uh, you know, like one of those little things that make shade, like a, the little cover thing. So, like, I went through probably like fucking 12 long boxes just in the sun. And my fucking back of my neck was burning. <laughs> my arms were. It, it, I, so, I work uh, graveyard shift and i've been working graveyard shift for uh almost 20 years now so sunlight uh, i'm like i i got the graveyard tan <laughs> i'm pale as shit uh and i don't like i'm not used to being out in the sun so yeah it, it was getting to me like i felt like my skin was just burning up <laughs> but uh it was worth it there were i actually walked away I was proud of myself. I actually walked away from, uh, there was another like four long boxes under the table. But my old ass, I was like, man, if I squat down there and I took my knee pads, I was ready, but I was like, man, I'm not gonna, I can't do it. After looking through that many long boxes on top, I just couldn't do it. And I walked away, which is really hard for me, but I did it. So, um, yeah, that was it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, congratulations. You got good taste show it hit the like hit the subscribe share with your friends uh check out my instagram i should have said that in my other videos check out my instagram uh check out my partner warlock's channel um comments questions recommendations always please feel free leave them i appreciate them and um and that's it uh so that'll do it like i always say Get off YouTube, read some fucking comics.